just quieting down, baby. For, for, for capita export value. Library. Minister, are you embarrassed by your behavior today? There's, there's a lot of bleeding hearts around. Do you have the fortitude or the gonads to stand up and come across here and say that to me, you son of a bitch? bitch, bitch, bitch. Just watch me. He certainly went too far, Mr. Speaker, when he st I saw him stick his tongue out. Contemptuous disregard. More than a slab of bacon talking here. The disappointment you also feel is my responsibility. I lost my temper. What is the nature of your thoughts? The word was F-A-R-T. <laughs> Do you want to do the intro? Uh, I think we should both do the intro at the exact same time. Okay. Three, Three two, 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 one. Hello. Oh, welcome, welcome to, to Canadian, Canadian politics. politics is this is boring. boring. My name is... I'm not going to say my name is Jesse. Okay. <laughs> I'm Reese and this is Jesse. And that was our failed a, attempt at reading the intro at the exact same time. Yeah. Yeah, with remotely where there's a slight lag. Um, oh, yeah. So, so this is um, this is Canadian politics is boring. The show for people who hate politics but care about stuff. Um, care about just, stuff. It used to be care yeah. about the big stuff. Now it's just care about stuff. Not every. Do you like wrestling and nachos? Boy, are we the podcast for you. <laughs> the still stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everything stuff is fine. So, Jesse, uh, how are you? Uh, you know, I'm okay. I, I don't. That's why I asked. Oh. Uh, I'm keeping busy. How are you, Reese? Tell me about your bear story. You always have a fun, interesting. I don't bear have. Story. I don't have a bear story. I don't have a fun really? or interest. There are no bears. No, the bears are all gone. Did you kill them? No, they just didn't stay. No, oh. that's so, a fascinating story. I got to tell you. Just you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that was our STD zone. Jesse, how are you? I'm okay. <laughs> Reese, what's up with your bears? Nothing. They're well, gone. This is. Uh, are we done with the STD zone as well? That was a very brief one. Normally, that was very we, brief. We, it was uneventful. An uneventful, we, short, sad. Well, I've got nothing going on in my life. Have you? Not really. No. Yeah, that's fine. So <laughs> let's just I I mean, walk the just... dog a little bit. Uh, tomorrow, I have to uh, walk the dog for two hours because of uh, people that are coming by who are scared of dogs. So what are you doing? So, like you know, you wear your dog out so that it doesn't move and it looks like a rug, and then they're fine. I, I, that's exactly what it is. Yes, thank you. Perfect. That yeah, sounds nice. That's okay, cool. Oh, awesome. Uh, it's so, a fucking fascinating STD zone today. <laughs> Jesus. <This is> <laughs> we should probably just get on to talking about something. So, um, yeah, this is, tell me, teach me something for fuck's sake. Well, we've done something historical recently, and this one is this one is based on something that is very recent. So, uh, before we before we get into our um, our awesome story. I just wanted to... I hope uh, it's awesome. It better be yeah, awesome. Uh, before we get to our awesome story, I just wanted to say, hey, um, we have Patreon, and if you really like this show, we'd really like it if you could support the show. It's like, I don't know, how much is it? Like $7 a month or whatever? Um, and Canadian. seven fifty Canadian, Canadian, which is like Canadian. five American. Yeah. Um, and, and we're going to be getting more tiers soon. We just thought we'd try one oh, tier, yeah. and this, it didn't really work. So, no. so we're going to be going all fucking hog out on. Oh, this I thing. didn't know is we were going to do tiers. I didn't. I didn't think we were doing tiers. But did we um, not talk? Oh, okay. No, no. So, so, what we're, so <laughs> there's a bunch. There's a bunch of Canada is boring episodes on there, but also you get this ep these episodes. Uh, uh, the, at the beginning of the weekend so they release on friday with no ads versus monday with ads so you get to enjoy us all weekend so anyway that, that's enough plug in that because you want to do content so let's talk about the content story content is king yeah okay let's do it all right so, teach me yeah. something about my own country's politics because you know how much i love this shit so this is a contemporary thing and this is this i'm borrowing something from south of the border so um this is all about misinformation you might have heard that like russia's been meddling in um disinformation in canada and america i didn't know about canada i i didn't i'm, I'm not really following the ukraine thing because it's depressing it's not as fuck. not just ukraine it's not just oh, ukraine okay. so so can you get is there any way you can get a little closer to your mic i'm literally pressed up against it with my face so no okay so anyway <laughs> that's the way so, <laughs> it's like it's not it's not for audio quality i just i just like picturing you like that that's all yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you are actually like that it just makes me happier so yeah, so just get <laughs> <laughs> so in recent years, like there's been a lot, you get bots online and trolls and hackers, and um, 
obviously during the 2016 federal election in the United States and also the um, uh, the 2020 election, there was a lot of uh, misinformation being spread online. And um, on July the 8th this year, Canada's Foreign Ministry of Fear, uh, Melanie Jolie, uh, Melanie Jolie announced new sanctions against Russia as a counter to the Kremlin's disinformation aimed at Canada specifically. Um, and, Why? And some data shows that- What have we done to anybody? Come on, uh, well, man. It's, it's, just, just, <laughs> it's, it's just kind of disrupting democracy and, and disrupting uh, perceptions in, in the war in Ukraine is a mixture of things. So Canada, it, it, apparently, something like 51% of uh, Canadians have been exposed to pro-Kremlin propaganda, um, which is like false claims about the Russia-Ukraine war. There's involvement as well, apparently, in the um, the, the, the convoys that happened here. Um, and it's, it does work. In some cases, it's, it's kind of rubbing off on um, on perceptions, and uh, this is this is like a big problem, obviously. So, 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 hold on. What's the what's the title of this this episode? This is called the War on Pineapple Reaches Canada. The War on what? Pineapple. The War on Pineapple. You should have led <laughs> exactly. with that, man. Exactly. Just, exactly. I was starting to fall asleep with all this like <laughs> propaganda, so, fucking news talk. It's just like the War on Pineapple. All right, I'm I've woken up a little bit. <laughs> so there's a there's a there's a, a report out called Private Message Public Harms, and it was used. It basically surveyed two and a half thousand Canadians, and it found that 40 percent of Canadians report receiving private messages that they suspect are false at least monthly. Thirty nine report receiving messages that are initially believed to be true, but later found out to be false at least monthly. And this is just gonna, hold on. What do you mean from bar, like? What? Oh, this is this is, people, like, this is people. This is people receiving like news news. Um, stories or social posts that have been forwarded to them by friends or even by bots about uh, about misinformation. So, so a lot of people who get their news that is heavily influenced by misinformation tend to, it tends to be shared on things like Telegram and in Facebook groups and those kind of things. So, they it's not through a mainstream like media organization. It's people who choose to get their information through those social media platforms. Okay. And, and apparently, twenty-one percent of Canadians Should people reply, who choose to get their news through their friends sharing articles on Facebook are concerned about bots. <laughs> no, 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 they're saying that they 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 receive mess like forty-six percent receiving messages they suspect are false. Thirty-nine believe it and then realize out later it wasn't true. And apparently, twenty percent, twenty-one percent of those in, uh, surveyed said that they rely on private messages for news. And well, that's how they get I the mean, news. I rely on you for my news, right? Yeah, but I mean, you can make all this the stuff problem, up. I wouldn't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and apparently, those those who those who believe COVID nineteen conspiracy theories are significantly more likely to receive news through WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger, um, <sighs> and a majority have the same level of trust in news they receive through messaging apps as they do from news websites, TV, and social media. And twenty six percent receive messages and containing hate speech at least monthly, uh, with rates higher among people of color. So it's basically wow. saying that a lot of people are relying on like information and articles being spread privately through social groups and friends, uh, just as much as as through um, trusted news outlets that is kind of being posted by journalism. And and this is how. So so the war on pineapple is. Um, I'm assuming you've never heard of CISA. So CISA is an American division of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, and they were trying to come up with a playbook for people to understand the influence disinformation online can have on the elections in 2016. And it doesn't just apply to the elections, it applies to any kind of disinformation. And they, the, the, the idea of pineapple came from the fact that they needed to give a toolkit to people from all different political backgrounds, like conservative, um, liberal, kind of more left wing, and they what the they needed to do was give them an example that wouldn't give them any wouldn't hint at any kind of political bias. It would have to just be like a really basic toolkit. So they used the argument of pe- of pineapple on pizza as as the topic. So ha- some people hate pineapple on pizza, some people love it, some people are indifferent. And they use that as a model of, rather than saying, did the was the election stolen f- from Donald Trump, which obviously would enrage emotion, they wanted to use this to develop a toolkit for election officials. They so they they thought that the putting out there that people disliked pineapple on pizza or loved pineapple on pizza would not 
elicit an emotional response? Do you have any idea how fucking divided <laughs> no, 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 the country it, is on Hawaiian pizza? Like, but but it's not, but it's not political. So it's a it's a relatable debate, but it has nothing to do with politics. All right. So so this toolkit is basically using that as a, as a as a basis. It's a really good way of looking at the five steps of how misinformation is spread online through people who prefer. Um, to get information through those kind of uh, small social media driven uh, news outlets or ways of getting news. So it starts it starts off with um, this first step is called targeting divisive issues. So foreign influencers basically are constantly looking out for opportunities to inflame the argument online. So they look for really hot issues that people start to argue over. So, uh, for instance, pineapple on pizza, you already had an emotional response to that. So they'll, they'll, it's they'll stuff, start, by the way. they'll start by looking. What's that? Exactly? You, know what's really, you know, what's really good is donair pizza, like donair meat. That is good. You, that is good you can pizza. only get it in, in the Maritimes, by the way. So good. That, that's my favorite one. But, but my, my friend Madeline, uh, told me that she created a monstrosity, which is, uh, donair pizza with donair sauce, and pineapple and hot peppers, and I tried it, and oh my god, it's so fucking good. Anyway, so, sorry, just so, uh, just thought I'd, I'd pepper this episode with something a little bit interesting. Please continue. <laughs> this is so 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 you once the once the kind of the the, the foreign uh, kind of agencies have identified a topic they can exploit. What do you think the next step is, Jesse? I don't fucking know. <laughs> so they move social media create memes and, and pepper them throughout tiktok and i don't know if I can... that's the next step so the first step is they they have social media accounts they've established with big followings and they rename and rebrand it so that it's more related to the topic so whereas it might have been like i don't know ladies man or whatever 69 they change the name of that account to pineapple pizza fight or whatever so that it's really relevant um so that they have that uh really focused outlet to start spreading misinformation about it so that's the next step so the trolls then and people spreading the misinformation so hold on wait i've actually heard of i've actually heard of this before where people build up a really big facebook page right where like the facebook page is like kittens and rainbows right and everybody just like you you pay to advertise the page through facebook and and it's like, do you like kittens and or rainbows? And you're like, oh, I like kittens and rainbows. And so you hit like. And so suddenly you're following the kittens and rainbows page until until the, the owner of that page gets it to like, I don't know, 50,000 likes or people following that page. And then they sell it to like, uh, I don't know, um, Nazi lovers of Winnipeg and like that. And then suddenly they just changed the title. And now the, the Nazi lovers of Winnipeg have like 50,000 exactly. followers on a exactly. Facebook page that they can instantly send shit to. Is that what you're talking about? Because yeah. That, yeah. So, so I, might, I knew that's how it used to work. I, yeah. I don't know if it, if it, if Facebook allows that anymore, I don't know. It's kind of know. it's kind of similar, but it's it's maybe you're already talking about similar topics, and then you just start to rebrand around something more specific. Because maybe there was something in the news you talked about, and then that's gone out of the news loop. And I'm sorry, they, Winnipeg. I was just it's just the first thing that popped into my mind. I don't see Winnipeg as a huge <laughs> Nazi loving community. Nazi, I don't. Nazi I was just trying to bed. think of something funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that just popped into my mind. I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Manitoba, we love you. <laughs> So, uh, so <laughs> your Nazi loving war crime. <laughs> yeah. So, so with that, with the with the bots in with that, well, with the with the troll accounts in place, they can then look for when people are uh, having a debate online, and all they do is share bad information and take extreme positions or drop in fake information to try and start uh, making distorting, amplifying, and enraging the conversation. So it just means they start to uh, take things out of context, fabricate things, just to try and make the discourse online go into a really uh, disruptive place rather than being like a healthy conversation. So saying things like, and these are the examples they gave, being anti-pineapple is an American, millennials are ruining pizza, keep your pineapple, pineapple off my pizza and what's wrong with plain old cheese? Those kind of comments <laughs> to start making people angry about the topic. 
I feel like a new podcast series is going on. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> What's wrong with plain old cheese? Episode five. <laughs> so then, For seventy-five minutes we talk about the different types of cheese on pizza. Exactly. So, so you've got this ecosystem of trolls creating these things and starting these and sharing those memes and sharing those like misinformation, and then that gets amplified by real people and then influencers who then go, ah. Oh, uh, this is a this is, seems to be buzzing around at the moment, and they'll talk about it. And then the, the next step then is is making it mainstream. So the idea that. Um, that they fanned the flames. They started this. Is that, as a topic. Is that Rosie in the background? I can hear. Whimpering. She's having a dream. She's having a dream. That's a drink. Um, That's the noise. She's having, a, she's, having a, when... she's having a dream. I said. Oh, a dream. A dream. Yeah, I had yeah. a drink. Oh, no, God. no. <laughs> so, um, so when that conspiracy theory is then shown by a mainstream news outlet. So in this case, they say, like, say, um, the pineapple debate made it onto Fox News. It then becomes legitimized. So because people see it on that mainstream news, it might be like weighed heavily in one political direction, but it's still then seen as like a mainstream news article. Okay. And, then the, and then the final stage is basically real world interaction, like boots on the ground. So in this sense, uh, you know, people are so angry about pineapple pizza, they then go and storm the storm Congress. Because I'm sorry, I can't listen. I can only hear your dog <laughs> making hey. dream noises in the background. Stop Don't it. wake her up. It's okay. So, right? so, um, so, and that's the idea: is that people then get so angry that real people then go out in public and start protesting pe uh, pineapple on pizza. So, this has been a huge, like, sociological experiment to see just how far we can we can push people through misinformation, like purposeful, sort of like angrifying emotional. Is that was it an experiment that they were doing? No, no. This this is to explain how it works. So this is what's been happening online since like the mid twenty teens, like since the begin since before the twenty sixteen election. This is the tactic that's been used. But the idea is that it's not for any point apart from to really cloud the debate. It's not like it's to try and get people I mean, to do anything in particular. It's just to get people right. angry and misinformed, essentially. Well, because if people are angry, they're they angrier people tend not to make. Uh, tend to make less logical choices. Exactly. You know? they exactly. Tend to, yeah, they they want to go with their they want to go with what they're angry about instead of stopping and thinking and and debating and listening and reading and stuff like that. It's so if the angry you can get the public, the I don't know, the easier they are to control. I don't fucking know. What's the, what's their a what's their i o a o a a p b by various other letters. Their, I, uh, you know the uh, thing. The I stuff. Don't know. What's their what's their goal here? I can't the, brain today. The goal, the goal here is just to talking like about, you're talking about weird shit. It's just Sorry. to make people <laughs> doubt. It's, the the goal is essentially, and and this toolkit work toolkit worked really well in the 2016 election. Apparently, and um, uh, one of the reasons it also worked well uh, in the 2020 election because it, it was a real idea about okay when you relate it to kind of election fraud stories. There's a lot of stories that had followed these steps um, through this process. But the idea of why they're doing this is to basically make people doubt like news and to doubt and like what is true, what isn't true. It makes it hard to understand. So even a rational mind, given lots of competing narratives, even if you are rational, it's very hard to digest and process what you should feel or what you should trust right. in that, in that no, sense. Of course. I mean, I've been so, talking about that with you for a while now about how like, you know, in the, in the fifties and sixties, seventies, eighties, fucking even nineties, uh, you could get your news from a reliable news source. But like the idea of misinformation, the idea of like people trying to give you news that was purposefully false was just non-existent. If, no, if no, I've exactly. watched CBC news and they told me, you know, Canada's under attack. I believe them, you know, <laughs> like that's right. And it tended to be true. At the, like, so just the fact that people are growing up in, in a world now where they, they don't know what source of information they can trust is frightening. And, and on top uh, of that, to add to that, I was having a conversation with a ju professional journalist like this morning, and they were telling me about how under-resourced they are. 
and how their ability to actually dig into a story to check accuracy, their ability to go and get a response from from the other perspective in that story to make sure they kind of give it a fair and balanced um, kind of opportunity for them to reply. They're so up against it because they have so many competing things in terms of they've got to do a print version, they've got to do a video version, they've got to do a Facebook post, a Twitter post, and they've got to deliver so many new stories a day um, and update all these different places and and then also do proper journalism. The the quality of of the environments that journalists are operating in in Canada, and specifically, but was they relevant to their experience? Means that they make mistakes and they make errors, and they can't always be fully accurate and right. investigate the sources. So when there is a mistake in the media or those newspapers, because journalists don't have the same resources as they used to, then it only makes them look bad or makes it look like they didn't do their job properly or that they were right. being mis- yeah. misleading. But they, it's just that they're, a lot of them are struggling to do the job that they love given the resources they've been given with like newsrooms today are not what they used to be in that sense. Well, it's no longer about um, you know which, which news station has the more integral or amazing news story. It's, it's all just about ratings versus you know likes and views and fuck. It's so fucking, oh God. Our world is falling apart, Reese. Well, Why news, are you doing exactly. this to me? Why? Exactly. I was having a nice day. I had nachos. <laughs> okay, I was watching some fucking TV, and now we're talking about I'm well, you, curl up in a ball and die. Do, do, do you know why I wanted to talk about this, though? I don't know. It's our job. You, no, no, it, you, well, you, like, I mean, you like teaching me about paid, boring you shit? To do that, you get paid to do a job. But this isn't boring. This is like important stuff. <laughs> this, is, this comes under important. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you saw in the news or not, but Polyev won the conservative leadership. We covered that. He called, yeah. a, a, he called a press conference, but he said there would be no questions. And what happened was one of the journalists- What, what does that mean? So he called, he called press, a pre- press conference, press. but nobody asked any questions. Nobody was allowed to ask questions. So he, it was, oh, he was going to- It's fucking, what's his name all over again? He was going to talk at them, essentially. No, and then- and What's talk. his name? Well, fucking our, our old conservative leader, Harper. Yeah, exactly. It's the same- He, well, he, fucking, work, he did the he same to, fucking thing. You remember? To work, you told me to, that. He used to work for Harper, so it's the same thing. But what happened was, one of the, one of the journalists was so enraged- they started asking questions while he was delivering his statement. Oh, and he him. then he then was basically, look at this. The liberal media won't even let me give my statement. And the journalist was isn't even the liberal. <laughs> the, the, journalist, <laughs> the journalist has a history of working for conservative news outlets. Um, but he was like, this, see, the liberal media won't let me give my... And he managed to spin it into, I'm just trying to... And they're trying to distort, just they're not giving me the respect and the space to distort my they distort my message and they're kind of like trying to stop me from talking and telling the truth and then what happened was he then sent an email out to followers asking for like donations and support to say um say the media's blocking me we're not getting our message out there you need to go around the media you need to you need to go around the media and not trust those main news sources that you usually use and wow. And and this comes back to what I was talking about, that, you know, that is basically a, a path of if you're going to trust kind of private messaging and things, that is the path where most of this mis- misinformation spreads fastest and is most prevalent. So th- he's asking people to go down a path that is harder for people to um, kind of pick what is true, what isn't true. There's no kind of necessary um, professional code that's followed like journalists are supposed to, obviously. Some people don't. There's pressures, all those kind of things that we talked about. But he's he's suggesting that his followers uh, start to take that path solely for how they get information, which I think is dangerous. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so when he said uh, that, it immediately made, made me think about the war on pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This wasn't a crazy episode. It was a great title. <laughs> I mean, like, it's depressing, and like, you know, oh, last episode, I don't know what the, last know episode, what the solution. Last episode, people were shooting each other and crazy duel. I, I earned this. All right, fine, fine. Educate me with some boring shit. It's I don't know what the solution to this is, though. Where everyone like social, I've said this before. Where social media has created this. I don't know if they intended this to happen, but this this ended up happening where it had a side effect of making everybody believe that they're a fucking expert. You know, everyone with an opinion, suddenly that opinion is fact and everyone must speak what is on their mind. They must. It's weird. It's so weird. You know, like during the past two years, God love them, but every single one of my fucking friends is suddenly an epidemiologist. You know, like... (laughs) 
Right, maybe, so, maybe, maybe you've just got to stop hanging out with epidemiologists. <laughs> Yay, funny comedy show. Yay. I just want oh, people to use come that. Come comedy show. Yay. I want Those people to use that fucking... toolkit. All right, then. Um, yeah. well, anyway, so, so <laughs> give, me, it, give me a dick joke. Come on, hurry up. What the fuck? Okay. Um, Pierre Pedisev. Pierre Pedisev? Pierre Penisev? Is that what's Penis Sev. Like a Penis Sev. Yeah. Penis that's great. Okay. Justin Penis O. <laughs> there we go. That's another one. <sighs> anyway. Um so uh are we doing like do oh we gotta do the ghost story shit now, haven't we, before we go? <laughs> uh did we get anything from listeners? Nope. Nothing. Nothing. You lazy fucks. No, so <laughs> I'm just kidding. We love you. Hey, yeah, we love you. Um, so, do, do you want me to just riff one? Yeah, riff riff one. Okay. Well, do you want to give me a um, some, oh, some, I... some some starters? Yes, I do. I can do this. Okay. okay. Um, it's a it's the Wild West. Okay. 1873. A child has been, a child has been sent into town to get some potatoes and this is a rubbish he, ghost story l- l- and he gets lured into a mine and go little jimmy saw the sign to the mine do not enter old mine dangerous written in letters of dripping paint that had dried quickly in the hot desert sun jimmy ambled over to the entrance of the cave all he could see was shadows and he heard dripping maybe the slight clattering of chains as the breeze came out. The cold air made the hair stand up on the back of his neck. So Jimmy put his bag of potatoes down, (laughs) got his box of matches out of his pocket, lit a match, and started to walk down into the mine. Why? Jimmy was stupid. (laughs) He was attracted. Every time he read a sign saying, don't do something, he would do it. As he went further down, he could hear a knocking sound, and he thought he could see like a green glowing light further down. As he went down, he saw a strange small man, one foot tall, wearing workers' overalls and with small tools working the coal face. Jimmy said, Who are you? What are you? The creature turned to him and smiled, said, I'm a knocker. Um, the knockers are real tr- folklore. Uh, would you like would you like some treasure Jimmy hold on what's a knocker it's like a folk they used to live in coal mines they're like fairies fairies that live in coal mines they're yeah. called knockers that's yeah. cool okay yeah right, there you go, go. Uh, Jimmy would you like some treasure Jimmy was like how do you know my name he's like that is a man and also I read your name badge because Jimmy <laughs> worked at Best Buy um, <laughs> and hadn't taken his uniform off uh, he said yeah of course I, I don't want to work in Best Buy anymore um, show me where the, 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 the diamonds are. So he followed the, the knocker down the gravel path, deeper and deeper into the mine. And suddenly the, the knocker started moving faster and faster and faster, and he couldn't keep up. So Jimmy kept running and running and running and running until he lost sight of him. And Jimmy was just in total darkness. The green glow had vanished. So he reached into his pocket, got the matches out, felt for a match, found the rough side of the matchbox, struck the match, and bang! Uh, he was actually in a pocket of uh, methane gas that was tra- <laughs> trapped in the, in, the, in the mine, and nobody nobody ever saw Jimmy again. But what they did see was hot baked potatoes rain down on the town from the sack of potatoes <laughs> left at the entrance. And the town did rejoice, and that day became known as Hot Potato Day, free hot potato day. And for 200 <laughs> years, hot potatoes would be dropped from aeroplanes and hot <laughs> balloons uh, to celebrate hot potato day. And no one saw Jimmy again. <laughs> How was that? Oh, that was easily the best part of this entire episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Jimmy exploded and the town rejoiced. <laughs> well, no, they got free potatoes that were hot. Right, yes. <laughs> he left them at the entrance. <laughs> See, a clever person would have put that detail in there early on 
and remembered it to tie it to that ending, but I literally just remembered that the potatoes were at the entrance uh, no, as I was running out of stuff to talk about. So. Well done. No, it was, it was very well done. I loved it. It was good. Listen, cool. I kind of I kind of interrupted your 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 story about uh, the depressing fucking propaganda with just me telling about telling you about how depressing I found it. And I, I feel like you might have ended the story too soon. Like, did you have more to talk about? <laughs> no, that was it. That was literally it. That was literally it? Was, that was it. Was, yeah, that was it, yeah. What is that? That was it. Sorry, my phone my phone went off. That was it. Oh, there was no it like was. and and well Russia no, it was just it was just sorry, right, well, or... I told you at the end is just don't just be careful with getting all the news from private messaging. Oh yeah, I mean I think that's I mean read it happen. and if it's from a trusted friend then fair enough and but always just check other sources. That's what I'd say. That's all right, yeah, that's good. Yeah, cool. All right, okay. Well let's go. Okay. Cool. Go to Patreon. We mentioned earlier in the episode. Uh, go to patreon.com forward slash Canadian politics is boring if you'd like to go their extra mile and support us. Yeah. And please uh, send us your ghost stories. Real would be great. If you have a real ghost story that happened to you, we will read it on the air because we're trying to do ghost stories every night, not every night, every episode until Halloween. Um, we've already had some, some, some entries. So please, yeah, we'd love to hear your stories. It'd be really fun. Canadian politics is boring at gmail.com or Instagram or Twitter or wherever you want to find us. Yeah, just pretend perfect. like we're your ex and you're stalking us. That's it. Or don't. Cool. Or All right. Don't awesome. Do <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. We love you so much. We love you. Love you. Okay. Okay.